So greens melt away heart disease, and we see that the speed of people getting well from heart disease and high blood pressure that are looking to reverse it is accelerated by the amount of green vegetables consumed. And this is, we're getting such great documentation by the scientific studies and by people who devote their, their life to scientific research are doing more research on nutrition today. And we are trying to do that too through the Nutritional Research Foundation. We're actually doing a study now where, a, where we have this new ability to check the blood for 50 types of cancer. Years, decades before a mammogram could show it, and we're going to show, we're doing study now with women who've been nutritarian for years versus the standard of women showing their um, degree of cancer development and their longevity potential through telomere markers and other longevity and epigenetic markers showing the chronological age of nutritarian women compared to standard American, doing the, part of the second part of the nutritarian women's health study with some dramatic new Thai technology to show dramatic advantages of eating this way that could potentially change the face of healthcare and encourage people to take better care of their health. But we have a lot of great studies already how that we can melt away heart disease and high blood pressure. Your degree of heart disease is proportional to the vegetable consumption. As vegetable portions a day increase, we're a vegetable-dependent animal, intravascular inflammation decreases. And we're saying here that it's only three types of food right? Processed foods, animal products, and, and plant foods or produce. That's the produce percent of your diet that determines your heart condition. And I'm also saying that a piece of chicken is like a bagel. I said it to you yesterday, and I said to you yesterday, why is a piece of chicken like a bagel? And you said to me back, you said because they both don't have a significant micronutrient load. You said they're just sources of macronutrients, but no significant load of micronutrients. And today I'm saying to you something additional to that, you. you. I'm saying the piece of chicken is like the bagel because neither one is hormonally favorable. And because they're both hormonally unfavorable, they both promote heart disease and cancer because the bagel raises insulin to unfavorable levels and the chicken raises IGF-1 to unfavorable levels. And because they don't generate phytochemicals and antioxidants, they allow reactive oxygen species and free radicals to develop. And because they fuel the bad bacteria growth in the gut, they cause more inflammation. And the inflammation from the bacteria in the gut causes more TMAO, trimethylamine oxide, from eating more animal products and more processed grains. And the combination of toxins coming out of the digestive tract and the hormonal effects of raising hormones accelerate disease. So it's not merely the chicken is no longer just like the bagel because of lack of micronutrients, but also because they produce negative hormonal effects, effects on the gut, and overall leading to acceleration of death and pro-inflammatory compounds that accelerate atherosclerosis because TMAO, trimethylamine oxide, um, promotes, inflames the intravascular lining, the endothelial lining of blood vessels, and accelerates the development of atherosclerosis. TMAO is linked to, an, again, animal protein consumption. And I am saying that saturated fat raises cholesterol and is pro-inflammatory. But the problem with that is because when people eat the chicken without the skin or eat fish or eat the low saturated fat animal products, they're still increasing the intravascular inflammation, increasing the risk of heart attacks and cancer, even from the animal protein content. So I'm just being careful to note that going to a low fat animal product still is not protecting you. And, it, and the reason why people have seen making the claim, oh, it doesn't matter what fats you eat, eat butter. You know, eat all the olive oil, the butter, and the cheese you want, because when people cut back on those fats, you still have just as much heart attacks. But that's because they had more animal protein. It isn't that they cut back the butter and ate beans instead, and you cut back the butter and ate green vegetables and, and sprouts and, um, and wild blueberries and mushrooms and onions. It's because they cut back the butter and ate more chicken without the skin. You follow what I'm saying? And it didn't show much difference. As opposed to where we're going now with nuts and heart disease, reinforcing what we did yesterday, showing that it's not one study, but it's more than 20 different studies, including the Adventist Health Study 1, Adventist Health Study 2, the IO Women's Health Study, the Physician's Health Study, the Care Study. All these studies show a dramatic reduction in all-cause mortality. All-cause mortality means reduction of cancer deaths, reduction of stroke deaths, and reduction of other deaths as well. Reduces all causes of death, meaning that people live longer if they have the regular consumption of nuts and seeds, but nuts and seeds have significant fat in them. So the whole idea is to eat nuts and seeds and don't eat other sources of fat. 
choose nuts and seeds as your source of fat. What happens if I add nuts and seeds to all the olive oil I'm eating? Well, then you're going to have too much calories. If I add nuts and seeds to the cheese and the meat, well, you're going to have too much calories. The nuts and seeds should be taking the place of the other sources of fat, obviously. But even, even when you take the physician's health study where they didn't reduce oil and they did not reduce meat and they just added nuts and seeds onto the diet, they still showed a dramatic reduction of cardiovascular deaths, an antiarrhythmic effect, an anti-seizure effect, an anti-inflammatory effect associated with a 60% reduction in sudden cardiac death for people in the physician's health study. The, the researchers made intense efforts to do autopsies and ascertain the cause of death among these doctors. They even interviewed the families who witnessed the deaths to see how quickly they died. Because sudden cardiac death is not caused by the clot, usually. It's caused by a ventricular tachycardia, where a person goes into a, a life-threatening arrhythmia, and all of a sudden they, their heart's not pumping out blood, and boom, they fall down, they faint, they smack their head, and they're dead on the spot, like Atkins. Remember Atkins, they claimed he died of a, like a, he hit his head on the ice. That's why he died, right? He slipped and hit his head on the ice. He had a heart attack. He had, a, he had sudden cardiac death due to his diet, and then because he, he fell, then he fell down. That was obvious from his medical records. But in any case, there's no other food that shows so much cardiovascular protection and protection against sudden cardiac death compared to even adding nuts and seeds to the diet. There's beneficial effects from doing, from obviously tremendous effects from having the nutrients in nuts and seeds, which actually reduce plaque adhesion, re help restore vascular elasticity, raise HDL, lower oxidized LDL. And remember that when you're getting your fat from nuts and seeds, a lot of that fat is bound to sterols and stanols, meaning that the magnetic effect of the nuts and seed fibers hold on to fat and carry that fat out into the toilet bowl. So you might be eating 200 calories from nuts, or it's 175 calories an ounce. You're eating a half an ounce with the meal. It might be 100 calories of nuts with that meal. So you had 100 calories of nuts, but did you really get 100 calories in? You didn't even get 100 calories in. It felt like you had 100 calories. Your, your appetite suppressed by 100 calories. But all 100 never really got in you in the long run because the sterols and sterols and other fibers hold on to fat and pull the fat out into the toilet bowl when you go to the bathroom. So part of those calories went to the toilet. You never even absorbed them. But the magnetic effects of fat from these ingredients in the nuts and seeds suck fat out of the bloodstream into the digestive tract. In other words, you have nutrients and fat moving both ways from the digestive tract into the bloodstream and from the bloodstream into the digestive tract. And when you eat nuts and seeds, it takes LDL cholesterol, and particularly oxidized LDL, and takes the most dangerous fats and sucks it out of the blood and carries the calories from the fat in the nuts and seeds, allowing the healthier fats to go in and the more negative fats that were in your body to come out and to be excreted in the, in the toilet bowl. So the fat that's excreted in the toilet bowl after you ate nuts and seeds was the bad fats that were inside your body, not fats that were inside the nuts and seeds. Isn't that pretty fascinating? Pretty interesting? And they, in doing so, they help restore vascular elasticity. And here's a study a polled analysis of 25 different trials showing as people increase their cons daily consumption from nuts and seeds from an ounce to two ounces, their amount of LDL cholesterol dropped accordingly. So more nuts are even better. And here's, the, here's first the Adventist Health Study and then the Adventist Health Study 2 with more than 44,000 deaths showing a 39% decrease in cardiovascular mortality and a 27% decrease in all-cause mortality, which means that even among plant-based eaters, it was tremendously lower in cardiovascular mortality. And there's a significant amount of heart attacks among plant-based eaters and vegans, mostly because they're eating processed and cooked carbohydrates, and they're eating more bread and pasta, vegan pizzas and frozen pizzas and stuff like that, right? Keep in mind that pasta is better than pizza, Pasta is better than bread because when you have the bread, you have the crust that's been baked and browned and darkened, and you have the pasta, it's cooked with a water base. So even though it might still be unhealthy, it's not as bad as eating the stuff that's been crisp and made into a pretzel-like material, where it's more dry cooked. When you wet cook something, it doesn't have as much negative effects. 
But the group with the highest intake of nuts and seed had such a lower amount of corn. And this, I don't see this as being even, even one iota of controversy because we have so many corroborating studies showing the exact same information in all different cohorts people tested. And the Adventist Health Study too was so much more, the data is so much more powerful because it's been corroborated by so many other studies as well. So we're talking here among looking at the Seventh-day Adventists themselves, the longest life was with vegans who ate nuts and seeds, the flexitarians who ate a little bit of animal products and ate nuts and seeds overall lived longer than the low-fat vegans with no nuts and seeds, and even people who ate who were non-vegan eating fish lived longer than the vegans with no nuts and seeds. Did you follow that? The low-fat vegans advocating that your diet be below 10% of calories from fat, which is a major part of the vegan community, is not supported by the data from the scientific literature. It's supported by their egos, because they can't modify what they, their claims were because they made them 20 years ago, and they don't upgrade them as the studies come out. They're refusing to upgrade their... They can't admit that they were giving people information that wasn't ideal. Let's look at the European Prevent study where they gave people bottles of extra virgin olive oil to take home with them. And believe it or not, giving people extra virgin olive oil and telling them to eat olive oil every day with their food decreased heart attack rates 15%. So olive oil versus no oil. And you could argue, maybe it's true, maybe they're taking the olive oil home and maybe taking that olive oil with them decreased their intake of butter and animal fat because they used the olive oil instead. So maybe olive oil was better than the animal fat and their heart attack rate went down. It's irrelevant anyway, because we don't buy a car by comparing it to a junkyard wreck. We want to do what's best. And when they, took people, when they took the olive oil away and they gave people nuts and seeds, the heart attack rates dropped by 70%, not by 15%. It doesn't matter if olive oil is better than butter, because it's not even nearly as effective as nuts and seeds, and it's much more fattening. Nuts and seeds aid in weight loss because they're more satiating and they're absorbed very slowly so they keep you not feeling hungry for many, many hours after you ate them, whereas oil is taken out of your bloodstream and put away in your fat right away and you could be hungry a half hour later. And oil is an appetite stimulant and oil stimulates the brain. And there's no nutritional scientist in the world that could argue or would want to argue that the oil from that particular food would be better or healthier than the whole food. Could any scientist in the world argue that walnut oil is better to take than a walnut? Or sesame oil is better than a raw sesame seed? Or avocado's oil better than an avocado? Or coconut oil is better than a coconut? Or an olive oil is better than an olive? It's always the case, in 100% of the time, that getting all the nutrients and fiber that the food has to offer is better than an extraction or a processed part of that food. And how do people rationalize? They, they have these belief systems that make no sense at all. They think they're going to lose weight by pouring oil over their food because they've been told that olive oil is good for them. How is pouring liquid fat on your food going to be good for you? And then you, how can, you can't eat nuts with the oil. You're just eating straight. You can have olive oil. You can have walnuts and walnut oil together. No, the nuts and seeds become the fat for the dressing. You blend the nuts and seeds into your dressing. You make it into your sauce. You, you're eating nuts instead of other sources of fat. And that's the hallmark of a nutritarian diet is we're consuming nuts and seeds. It's a diet high in vegetables with a huge variety of anti-cancer foods. But we're getting our fat. It's not a low-fat diet. We're getting our fat from whole natural foods, nuts and seeds, not from processed oils made from nuts and seeds and grains. Right? And it makes total sense when you take and reduce part of the carbohydrate in your diet, because we're talking about caloric replacement, we're not talking about sitting in a couch watching TV and eating a jar of cashew nuts. We're talking about using a nut-based dressing instead of using an olive oil-based dressing. We're talking about using nuts and seeds instead of eating cheese on your, on your sandwich, putting a cream sauce, a pesto sauce made with hemp seeds and, and basil and roasted garlic and hemp seeds mixed in, making a, a basil pesto and making a, instead of using mayonnaise, we're using, a, we're using garlic basil pesto made with nuts and seeds in it. We're replacing the oil and the cheeses and the animal sauces and the, with a nut and seed based sauce or flavoring. We're not sitting there and snacking on so we're keeping the, the calorie isocaloric, so to eat more nuts and seeds means we're cutting back on some other food instead, right? 
So we're eating less carbohydrate, less rice, less potato, less oatmeal, less whatever it is you're eating, you're eating less of the carbohydrate, and more bean and more green and more nuts and seeds and even more fruit. We're increasing nutritional variety in your diet. 